I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Have you ever had a bad motor output? The ESC won't do its little beepy things, and when you go to BL Heli and you hit read setup, it just doesn't show up. It's as if it's not even there. Well, I ran into that problem, and I'm going to take you through the whole process of how I troubleshot it and how I fixed it. Stay tuned. Here's the background of the story. I had just finished putting a new ESC on the copter, and when I plugged the copter into the computer to use BL Heli to update the firmware and all the stuff you do when you put a new ESC on a, on a copter, it, BL Heli would not detect the ESC. It's as if it wasn't even there. And the first thing I do whenever this happens is, if I'm using the BL Heli GUI app, the Chrome app, I switch over to BL Heli Suite and just try it. They have different logic about how they time out if the ESC doesn't respond quite fast enough. And I've seen a lot of scenarios where for whatever reason, like BL Heli Suite won't read the ESC, but BL Heli GUI does, or vice versa. It's always worth a try. Switch from one to the other, and no, the behavior was absolutely consistent. ESC number three would not read. It was just if it wasn't even there. The first thing I did was check to see that the ESC was getting power. So I put my voltmeter into DC volts mode. I plugged a battery in with a smoke stopper, of course, and I tested in that location right there, right here on the ground and the positive pad. And I got 15 volts, whatever the battery was. So I can confirm that the ESC was getting power. I should say as a side note, I really like what KISS ESCs do where they have diagnostic LEDs on the ESCs so you can see if the ESC is powered and you can see if it's getting a valid throttle signal. There are very few BL Heli ESCs, if any, that do that and it would be real nice if they did. So what I did was I powered up the copter and I pinched the motor in my fingers and I felt for the vibration. You can usually feel the vibration and I could see that I was getting the first three tones, do do do, but I was not getting the last two tones. Doot, doot. And in case you don't know, those first three tones occur whenever the ESC is powered up. And the last two tones occur when the ESC sees valid throttle signal. And it wasn't. So immediately it verifies that the ESC has power, but it's not getting throttle. Now there's two things that could cause it to not be getting throttle. One of them is that the signal wire itself is not attached correctly. And the other is that uh, the signal wire could be shorted to ground. So think of shorting a wire to ground like punching a hole in a, in a, in a reservoir, in a, in a bucket. You can put as much water as you want in the bucket, but it's all going to just go out of the bucket. If the signal wire is shorted to ground in some way, then the signal will never get through to the ESC. So I put my multimeter into continuity mode, and I tested right here between ground and signal on the ESC. Now you can see that my signal wire is disconnected. Like I said, you're coming in in the middle of the process here, but I want to... I want to you know, walk you through it. So I tested for continuity between ground and signal, and I did find that I had that continuity when the signal wire was wired up. So I know that somewhere signal is getting shorted to ground, and I just have to figure out how. And now we enter the process of trial and error. And what I, my first guess was that the ESC was damaged in some way. So I disconnected signal from the ESC, as you can see here. And that allows me to determine whether the short is here in the ESC or here in the wiring and the beta flight. And you can see that with the signal wire disconnected, when I test for continuity between signal and ground, there is none. But when I go to the beta flight F3, when I test for continuity between signal and ground, there is continuity. So I've got a short. Now, the short could be in the wires here. It is possible, but I have un untwisted this wire and I have verified I don't see any sign of damage uh, to the wire. So I think we have a short here in the Betaflight F3. If I really wanted to be sure, I could desolder this wire from the Betaflight F3. And if I do that and the, sh the short goes away, then I know it's here in the wiring. I really don't think that's the case though. So then, what is the workaround? And the workaround is to use resource remapping to move this signal output, this motor output, to another pin. And in order to do that, we're going to go over to the computer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my friend Google and I'm going to search for Betaflight F3 pinout. And I'm going to go to the images and look at the pinout for the Betaflight F3. Now the good news is you can move a motor output to almost any other general purpose pin. Uh, so for example, the PPM input pin is a fine contender since I'm never going to use a PPM receiver. 
The, um, the soft cereal pins might be a good candidate. I'm not 100% sure about those, but I think so. And the LED strip pin is another good candidate. Any of these could be used to replace a motor output. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the configurator. We'll go to the CLI and let's look at the resources that are currently assigned. So I'm just going to type resource and it's going to show me the resources that are currently assigned. And I want to make a note of what I'm going to use for my motor output. So right now motor two, that's my damaged motor, uh, rather motor, yeah, one, two, three, motor three. Motor three is my damaged motor and it is on B08. Now, don't worry about what B08 is. It's just an arbitrary internal reference for the pins on the microprocessor. But motor 3 is on B08, and PPM input is on B07. LED strip is on A08. Now, let's say I want to use my PPM input uh, instead of motor 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type resource PPM1 none. And that's going to remove PPM1 from B07. And then I'm going to type resource motor 3, B07, and that's going to put motor 7 on B03. And you'll see now motor 3 is on B07, and PPM is not there. So now we have successfully remapped motor 3 to the PPM pin, and all I have to do is go back to the bench and solder up the wire to that pin, and I should be good to go. Joshua from the future here to remind you that you also need to type save and hit enter, or the changes will be lost the minute you unplug the board. You always have to save the changes you make in the CLI. Yeah, Joshua from the past overlooked that. He's so dumb, jeez. There's one more note here, and that is if you're doing D-shot, then you also have to think about DMA conflicts. If I type resource list, here I can see the DMA channels that are in use, and I do not want to see more than one resource on a single DMA channel or you'll get issues. You'll notice you do not see my motor outputs here. And the reason for that is that these ESCs, they don't support D-shot and I'm using multi-shot. If you're using multi-shot, one-shot, any of those analog protocols, then DMA channels are not used for the motors and you don't have a lot, you don't have anything to worry about when you are uh, remapping motor outputs. And that's going to do it for this video. I hope I've shown you the exact steps I used to troubleshoot this problem to confirm that I do have a damaged motor output on the Betaflight F3 because I had continuity between those pins and I desoldered things to make sure I knew where the continuity was actually coming from. Once I ver verified, once I was confident that I had a damaged motor output, it was being shorted to ground. You're never going to get signal out of that. Then I found a pin to remap to and I carried out the process of remapping through the Betaflight command line. Hope it was educational to you. Hope you learned now and you can reproduce this. Thanks for watching and happy flying.